from uh, graduating high school, I uh, went to uh, Belvary College at that time, now a Southwest Illinois College. I uh, did an Associate of Arts degree there, uh, minor in history. Uh, I met a gentleman who was uh, from Eastern. He was uh, named was Dr. Freddie Banks. He was in the Department of Education. He uh, also was one of the first black superintendents to coin Illinois. And so he had an established a program called Minority Teachers in uh, Education. And so he kind of talked me into going into education. So I went to EIU, became a history teacher, and uh, I thought I was finished, getting ready to go to the workplace. And uh, he twisted my arm again and said, hey, you need to go and get your master's, and so you should do it. So I did my master's program. Still one finish with me, said, hey, you should get your specialist. You already got your master's with a few more classes, so I got my uh, specialist superintendents. And so from there forth, he still kept pestering me. So eventually I had just got, also went, uh, graduated from Carbondale with PhD in education. I looked at school board governance. Uh, some of my history include, I was a teacher down at e, uh, Springfield, uh, taught history, taught history in uh, East St. Louis public schools. Uh, I was promoted to uh, assistant principal. I was supposed to start off at the high school, I love high school, and lo and behold, my superintendent was like, yo, I have a position for you, but guess what, it's at the middle school. I was like, oh my goodness, who I worked with middle school kids before? Oh my God, you, love, you like middle school kids? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, hormones, they don't know if they like want to. when they get older. Yeah, we like when they get older. So different, <laughs> different bag from what I was used to from the high school. And uh, eventually I had my first principalship come open and it was in Danville at a school called Mead Park. And it was dealing with elementary. I'm like, hey, I'm keep going down and not back at the high school. So I, I did the elementary, and then I eventually relocated to Mount Vernon as a principal of a four or five building. Um, it was a tender center. Uh, I was working on, I stated my doctoral degree on school board governance. Uh, there was not, there is not a lot of research on school board governance and how they impact student achievement. And also wanted to uh, look into what part does training and does training help? Uh, school boards and we at that time we were starting to see a lot of reforms right and teachers and teacher education we were seeing a lot of reforms uh, such as uh, response to intervention some of you all know about that okay we we're seeing a lot of reforms and I was like it just be a matter of time before they mandate school boards have training and at that time it was like oh you crazy that would never happen Two years later, after finishing my degree and focusing on that subject, guess what, in Illinois, we have school board training. So, when I was finishing, uh, when I was at, as a principal doing that degree, I used to do a lot of work for the IPA, some presentations and such, and I ran across the executive director for Illinois Association of School Boards. Just so happened that they was looking for an individual that knew that southern region. They was having someone that retired, retired from that area. And they thought that I'd be a good fit because I knew the educational background, but also I knew the governance. So just a little something about myself, who I am. And so let's just start from this end so I get to kind of know who you are. Janice Mitchell, Urbana School District, and the founding director of Urbana Neighborhood Connection Center. Gary Wildbacher, um, Illinois State. I work in the middle level program and middle school kids are in the best. <laughs> All right, you get no argument for me. <laughs> and Felicia, we want to know who you are. I'm the BBC RSO vice president and also a graduate student in the master's program of gerontology. All right. I'm Danielle Gray. I'm a school counselor in Champaign, Illinois at middle school as well. And, um, yeah, that's right. We need more guns and school police, but we don't need more counselors. Correct. I'm here. We've done the current training in the Oscar Mitchell Foundation at the first house. Okay. Oh, great. Yeah. Who's the regional suit? Okay, yeah, yeah. Tyler Rush, I'm a student here. Okay. Oh, 
<laughs> okay, all right. Okay, great. Charleston. Oh my goodness. Oh my school in Charleston. Yeah. I'm Kerry Roder for I teach middle school health in Champaign. Okay. High school baseball. Okay. Them Cardinals, you should have coached them Cardinals. Maybe they would have won yeah, let's, yesterday. Let's not, let's not talk about that. <laughs> Trevor Camp, all the guys counselor in Champaign. Okay. Uh, real quick, because I know we don't have a lot of time. It's a short session, 50 minutes. Uh, what, what are your expectations for, uh, from this workshop? Not all at once. Well, I, I think I am, and although I am in a dual role right now because I am supposed to be downstairs, but I, I just know that when I start <coughs> in the beginning, when you start uh -huh. achieving cultural competency, I, I mean, quite often we always see working at, looking at, so I think I was looking to see what do you look for when you say that you have achieved cultural competency when it comes to working with particular children. Yeah. Different okay. Anyone else? What are you looking for? Something new and good. Something new and good? Okay. All right. I think sometimes cultural competency is misconstrued as mm -hmm. advocating for African American students. Mm -hmm. And I think it's way more than that. Yeah. That. Yeah. So yeah. I'm just curious to see if I can hear anything today. Okay. I see cult, uh, cultures, I, I mean, I think most people, uh, Caucasian, African American, you know, the races, there's a difference between race and culture. Uh -huh. So there are several different cultures, so we should be confident in all the different cultures. That's right, that's right, <coughs> that's right. Okay. Uh, excellent, excellent. Uh, I don't know if I have any magic bullets. <laughs> I don't, but one of the things that I hope to be able to do is just challenge the way that we think about certain things. Uh, because first, if, you, if we don't change our paradigms and the way we think about things, right, uh, it all starts with the mind state and the, the way. And so, you know, I, you know, and so that's what my job and my task is uh, here today. The, I just want us to to be able to have an awareness and sensitivity when working uh, with you from uh, different cultures. Uh, and in a minute I'll tell you why that's important, especially to certain subgroups. And also how to increase the understanding of enhanced communications and, uh, pr uh, between professional practitioners and minority youth and building and sustaining relationships with minority youth. Now, one of the things that uh, you alluded to earlier, a lot of what I'm going to talk about, it's not necessarily what, good for minorities, it's good for everybody. You, you follow me? But, you know, uh, and so uh, I do want to talk some, some specifics about minority because we do know that some minority groups are in trouble. That's just a fact. For instance, the educational achievement gap is real. It has some serious uh, social, economic, and political consequences. Uh, and this is true about especially black boys uh, who are overly represented in special education. Overly they're less prepared to attend college. They receive more suspensions. Uh, on that first sheet of, that, of your handout, that's, a, uh, that's the new law that there, well it's not a law yet, but it's the Senate Bill 3004, and it has come up multiple times, and now they're looking to reduce or limit the number of times who is suspended from school. Guess what subgroup that they're concerned about? African Americans. Wow. I, I, <laughs> and so first of all, is this true? Do you agree with this statement? How many of you all agree with that? about black youth. Do you think black children are overly represented in special education? <laughs> overly represented uh, even in our penal systems? Yes, it's not, it's not an opinion. Yeah, it's data, it's fact. It, exactly. And so one of the things, um, and, and I don't know, we have to be smart the way we think about how we deal with this issue. 
I'm not sure I agree with Senator uh, Lightford approach as they're saying, well, hey, we're not going to suspend anybody. That's not the approach either. Uh, and I wish I had more time to, to go into that. But for, but for the most part, sometimes I think that it, it all hinges around teacher expectations. Remember I talked about mind states? It all t hinges around teacher expectations and making sure that we don't see certain students as a deficit, you know, but adding uh, value. I want to talk about uh, something you mentioned, cultures, because there is a difference between race and culture. And America, as we are aware, is composed of different cultures, right? And some people say, well, this is the strength of our nation that we are composed of different cultures. And so, therefore, we, I think we all have an obligation to try to uh, understand and communicate more effectively with all cultures in that effort to eradicate prejudices and also promote racial uh, harmony. Uh, wh what is your definition of culture? What is culture? What is culture? What do we mean by culture? It's the language, it's the dialect, it's the cosmology, it's the music, it's the way people have a certain walk and talk, a set of relationships mm -hmm. um, that uh, cohere them together. Uh-huh. You're absolutely right. Uh, and it also has what, like common values, common beliefs, customs, right? So. If we do not take the time to learn about different cultures, what, what's the end product of that when we don't take the time to learn about other cultures? What, what's, the, uh, what's the equation? What happens? Yeah, based on our own experiences, because we all have certain paradigms that we grew up. Where did you grow up at? Sickle? Okay, right, so, so you, I'm pretty sure you grew up. Tell me about your community briefly. What kind of community Small was it? Rule. Small rule. Okay, so I'm, so I'm pretty sure that you grew up with certain experiences that you gathered from that community, right? And so what happens then if you do not uh, take an opportunity to learn anyone else's cultures as you grew up? What could possibly happen? Stereotype everybody. You, you may have some faulty uh, misperceptions or some faulty stereotypes. Because, that's, and because for the most part, where are you going to get most of your information at from other cultures? If you haven't really left out of your community, where are you going to get that information from? Other people believe. Uh, media, TV, right? And we all know that uh, the TV is not biased. <laughs> But you know, like all uh, you know, white men can't jump. You remember that that movie? <laughs> oh. But anyway, that's kind of like culture, and we kind of define what we mean, meant by culture earlier. And what kind of different cultures? What type of cultural groups do you belong to? Well, see, my parents were from Europe. Mm -hmm. I was from Hungary. Most. Students go hungry, hungry all the time. I have no idea what that was. <laughs> <laughs> so, my, well, so I went to school with other middle class white people, but I didn't have anything in common with them mm -hmm. because, you know, back in the 70s, soccer was not the sport. Mm -hmm. you know, football, baseball, not play soccer. soccer. Mm -hmm. What are you doing that for? So, and the different foods and the different ways uh, that my dad was raised in this unknown country. So, I was just telling him, I said, I, I didn't have that. Because I'm from 15 miles north of Peoria, small uh -huh. town, but it's like, oh, so you're white. Like, well, yes, but no, because yeah. it was just a different upbringing. Yeah, different upbringing. Now, try to identify, when we talked about cultures, we, remember we said it's not necessarily about race. It could be, you know, different customs, values, and beliefs. So what type of, uh, think about where you at as an adult. What type of cultural groups do you belong to? We'll start there. Are you yeah, we... <laughs> What type of cultural groups do you think you belong to? I mean, a, a lot of different ones. Women, black women, uh, educated. Okay. Uh, so you belong to certain education groups. That's a culture, right? What about any fraternities? You go to, what about religious organizations? Okay. So that's a culture. So, you know, even one person can have several different uh, cultures that we belong uh, belong to. Excuse me. 
Mm -hmm. I would like to say and but is that all right or should I go, no go right ahead okay. I think what you're saying is absolutely true there are multiple cultures and every individual has multiple identities based on uh -huh. those cultures um, but what I don't want people to leave with is the idea that culture is neutral uh -huh. and that um, since there are all these cultures, um, they sort of must all be uh, operating on an equal playing field because that would be an injustice. Yeah, that's you know true. I mean? No, that's true. Okay, so you got it from there. Yeah, that's true. Okay. And, you know, and, and, you know, and it's our, to be able to understand and appreciate diversity means that, you know, it's, it's, it's ever going to be a process. Uh, and not an event, but we always have to keep learning more about the different cultures, in particular the different cultural groups that are represented in our schools, because those are very important. Um, the culture, because we belong to a variety of cultural groups, uh, sometimes it's common to hold attitudes and beliefs that influences the manner in which we communicate with other cultures. As a result, we may hold the idea that our culture is primary than uh, other cultures. And remember, we talked about uh, some of this is due to media. Uh, as uh, you say, sickle? Is that the correct name? Sickle? Okay. And for instance, when I, I grew up in East St. Louis, I remember the first time I went to camp, it was Du Bois Camp. And at that time, there was no white people that I could remember in East St. Louis. Not that I've seen. It may be, you know, I haven't seen many. So I have not had a, I haven't had a relationship with whites, a self-account. And so when I first went to camp, I was about, uh, I'm giving my age, but I was about 10 years old. And at that time, there were shows like uh, Leave it to Beaver, uh, you know, Andy Griffith. <laughs> and so I went to camp and a white female asked to dance with me and I have never really I, I was not a good dancer back then anyway so I, I, I so immediately Trevor I reached out and put my arms in the air like this because I thought white people dance <laughs> like this now where would I get that perception from Media, leave it to Beaver. When I saw those shows, you know, and so I had a faulty perception based on uh, my cultural upbringing. Remember that movie, National Lampoon's Vacation? Remember they was going on a trip and they went through the city of East St. Louis. That's <laughs> dog out my city, but they went through East St. Louis. You all remember that scene? Huh? And, and he was and he pulled over to ask for directions. Anybody remember that? And what happened? Well, they're giving them all these uh, uh, crazy uh, directions while they're stealing their hubcaps. While they're stealing their hubcaps. And I cannot begin to count the on my hand the number of people who thought East St. Louis was just this crime ridden place based on that one TV show. But that's back then, right? I mean, it's not like. Uh, the media still portray different biases today, right? Right? Well, I'm going to have, who, is there, is there a school nurse in here? We have to check some posts in here. <laughs> we have to make sure, maybe it's too early. What do you think? Do you think the media still portray it's probably worse. some biases today? It's probably worse in some ways. Okay. You know, what a, let's talk about Muslims for a minute, because I always like the media portrayal and how they discuss, especially when it deals with uh, Muslims or people from the Middle East. And on one show, it always bothers me when there is some type of terrorist attack or whoever, they will always state the name of their religion first. Muslim Sharif Planted a bomb today. Is that a bias? Because they're associating the religion with him. Now look, are there some crazy Christians in the world? Huh? Capital C crazy. 
I mean, I mean, or who claim, I will say who claim to be Christian. Huh? Oh, well, there's some crazy ones. Just go to my church. I'll point some out for you. But I never hear them say, Christian Timothy McVeigh did this. Why not? Why not? Why they don't do that? Trevor, talk to me. Why? Because uh, if the news is from America and most of the Christians, yeah, and so also, you know, I think that sometimes they are trying to create a perception too. And we, first we have to keep in mind that the media, and this is another story in itself, they don't necessarily have to represent us, they have to represent their stakeholders or they're getting viewers. So they don't do whatever sales. But let's talk about this corporal comp uh, competency. And I know that America is comprised of multiple cultures, races as well. But can we exist? That's the big question. Can we exist? Well, can we coexist? Well, the question actually has a lot to do with the question of power. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, the reason mm -hmm. they wouldn't say Christian Timothy McVeigh is because in this country, the people who own the reins of power, for the most part, identify with Christianity versus Muslims are considered a minority population and thought of as one entity versus white people and Christians are allowed to um, be multidimensional. And so then that's about Timothy McVeigh. But if it was about somebody of African American descent, it wouldn't have been about Imani Bazell. It would have been about African Americans. So yeah. I think the same thing happens. Yeah, but, but how can we how can we bridge this gap? How can can we ever can we ever have a society, right, that that really uh, don't can we have a society that, that bring all these different cultures together and respectful of everyone's different cultures and races? Is that possible? I don't know, but the, the ultimate goal is to continue to work to achieve that. Because you have some diversity in your school, right? Mm -hmm. So how do we achieve that even in our schools? How do we achieve it in our public schools? I know Champaign is diverse. Charleston High School is diverse. No, well, they have, some, some they have some diversity. They have some diversity. Uh, not, not, not as probably as Champaign, but they have some. But, yeah. And there are different cultures, too, in that school. Oh, I, would, but, I, have, I know nothing about Charleston High School. But think about, think about Champaign. Think about Champaign. You have different cultures in Champaign. Think about your, your district. Absolutely. How can, we, how can we create a community with all these different cultures and races in your school? What needs to happen? Yeah, but there's a common glue. There is a common glue. And that common glue is that we have to go back to identifying our values. It doesn't matter, you know what, it doesn't matter if you belong to different cultural groups. If we're going to say that we all Americans, right, that's what we say in this country, we all Americans, right, what does being an American mean? Yeah, but, and that's the problem that we see so many different issues because we have not had these kind of type of conversations. Well, okay, let's go back because there used to be some really strict values in America. Don't you agree? There used to be some really good values. You, you could go back to, real quick, you could go back to our founding fathers who said that all men are what? Created equal. Now, I know, I, I know, I know, but endowed by their creator, right? You had certain values. Remember uh, during 9-11, right after 9-11, uh, and there was a big discussion by the way we treat enemy what? Because what, what was we starting to do? Huh? First of all, you know, they always tell these lies. <laughs> Just kill me. You know, when they ask about waterboarding being torture, well, I don't know if it's torture or not. Hell, call it what it is. It's torture. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I mean, you think you want to be waterboarded? I don't think it's, what you think, Tyler? Waterboarded, you don't want to be waterboarded. I don't think it's a pleasant experience. But we, for a long time, we had a flat out in this country. Wasn't we against torture? Yeah. That was one of our values, right? What happened to it during the 9-11? That value kind of... So what, so what values do we have? And, and even though we may not be able to answer that question today, we have to go back and answer this question in our schools. If we're going to bring cultures together, right, don't there have to be some common values? Huh? But I think there has to be commonality based on being human. Not based on being <laughs> yeah, but see, here's what happens, though. Here's what happens with that argument. You have this whole thing between liberty and equality. And the liberty says, well, just I want my damn liberties. Right? I want my liberties. I want the right to, like in California, I'm not saying pro or con, but in California, they just passed, do you know what rest what law in California? Dealing with transgender. Transgender, equality. So now if I'm a male, but if I believe I'm a female, I could use the female's restroom. How many of you all knew that? Yeah, that's the law. And so that really deals with what? My, what, liberties. I should have a right to carry a gun if I want to. Forget you. I should have a right to carry a gun. Forget everybody else. I should have a right to do 90 on the highway if I want to do 90, right? Shouldn't I have that right? It's my liberties at stake. But what happens when you start focusing too much on everyone's liberties? You forget about the common good. You have anarchy. <laughs> because liberty automatically takes something away sometimes from what? Equality. What's good for everybody? And if we're going to have some equality, right, then we have to discuss common values. And I don't mean that we all going to agree, but that do mean that we have to, what, have a give and take here, right? That's why seven Supreme Court justices, right? There have to be some decisions. We have to have some type of way of agreement. And so in your schools, think about those values that exist in your schools. Race is also, despite our different, uh, specifically about race, despite our differences, we need to know that 95% of humans have the same DNA. Why is that important? Yes, skin is only uh, skin deep. Color is only skin deep. That's about it. The other things is cultural, environmental, now, let's also talk about this melting pot because Zhang Wheel, who turned this, he thought and promoted a society where there are greater individual freedoms and all national and ethnic identities is somehow transferred into this bucket called Americanism or this theory of assimilation. And so the United States has, over time, been described as this building pot because of our strengths is that we are a nation of immigrants, so we're going to convert everybody into being an American. But there was no thoughts about, uh, once again, about common identity. And once again, as you pointed out uh, in the back, is that that American was based on whose idea of an American? White males. White males. The, you all heard of the wasp, right? Exactly. White, Anglo, Saxon, and usually, usually Protestant. What do you think? Do you think should everyone be transferred into Americanism? What do you all think? Pretty boring. What if, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a risk here, and I know this is being yeah. recorded, so I'm not trying to. No, no. What you, does this have to do with helping our minority populations and understanding? It, it is. I'm going there to a second. You know, put the, put the pieces of the puzzle together. Okay. Uh-huh. Because I think we all sort of know this stuff because we're educators and, right? So, I, but how does that translate to helping 
our minority cultures that are struggling. If we look at our data, right? We all have data that data is just unbiased because numbers are numbers. Mm -hmm. But how does it translate? Because, let me, let, yes ma'am, and did I get to your question? I would say that it translates because even as educators, not all educators understand what Americanism is. And so some of us know it because maybe our own personal experiences, but we still have educators who don't know that. So I think it's so important that as educators, we understand that as well um, because we have to know what our own um, thoughts are and what our own biases are as well because if we're not careful, and I may be understand for saying this, we may give our own biases to students about what their is, and we can easily be off track as anyone else. So that's why I can get this work. Yeah, and, and, let me, and let me say this too, uh, a couple of things. There, there's, there's a afternoon workshop this afternoon that starts at two. Uh, and that's really, I'm gonna talk about some of that here, and that's really going to, to tie the knot for you about how this is directly applicable to schools. We're giving you some very hands-on uh, practical information to take back. Okay, and there, development yeah and there is some there is some overlap into this one yeah. and I would have preferred just to do that one workshop but they have wanted to kind of build a foundational piece about culture and you know and white and, and privilege first and so there is some of that here but you're going to get a lot more I guarantee you in the in the two a two o'clock session as well and so but I do understand where you're coming from too I mean, we're changing our identity, right? Mm -hmm. We're trying to change our identity at schools and say, how do we become more culturally relevant? How do we become more culturally competent? But we're not changing the form yeah. of what we do and why we do it. And I, that's what I'm well, interested in. And, but here's the other thing, though, too, though. You, you got to understand, like, if you... You got to go understand that we have to get to the root causes and dealing with paradigms, ways of thinking, and mind states. Because what happened is that we bring this into our school. And so sometimes I, I get it. I could give you all the practical things to do and say, okay, here's some good things to do at school. Here's some good things. Here's how to build a relationship with kids. And I'm going to give you all some of that later on at the two o'clock session. But at the end of the day, guess what? If it haven't penetrated your heart and you haven't had a mind change, I guarantee you it won't work. So, you know, the two kind of go hand in hand. It requires a mind state change re no matter what direction you, you decide to go into with practical applications. Uh, but anyway, and, but let me, let me kind of get into some of this a little bit more about this whole theory about Americanism because a lot of times it was based on this whole idea of, of, of whites being in a position of power and this whole argument of white privilege. Okay, now, how many do you all believe that whites are privileged? Yeah. What do you all think? Oh. <coughs> you said I was kind of on the outside, so I didn't, yeah. I, didn't I saw both sides kind of a little bit more than what I was. So mm -hmm. how, why, how, you, 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 you indicated whites of privilege. Why, why do you believe that? Well, I think there's a lot of reasons for it. I think the, the country was founded on structural racism and um, that's continued to exist. And I think that when, when, you look at, um, when you look at where you're born and how geography correlates to test scores, when you look at who writes educational policy and, and the values that, that are historically connected to the folks who write educational policy, uh, I think it, it inherently be benefits those in power. And whites have historically been in power. So yeah, I think, I think whites are privileged. I also think that white privilege can be overcome. But I also believe that there's many whites whose eyes have never been open to the notion of being privileged. Yeah. And because what is the makeup of our schools? Who, let's talk about uh, for the staff. What is the makeup and diversity for the staff at most schools throughout the nation? Who are our teachers and administrators? 
They're white. And usually, especially teachers, usually a what? Female. Is it possible that, do you think some white females are bringing some faulty perceptions and some privileges in the classroom? Um, here's one way to think about, I call this the litmus test. Uh, when was the last time, Trevor, that you had to think about being white? Uh, last night, my best friend's African American. We talk about cultural differences all the time. We were hanging out last night, so okay. you know, we often do that. Okay. When the last time, sir, have you, the last time that you had to think about being white? This morning when we were talking about white. Okay, before the day then. <laughs> <laughs> before the day. Probably yesterday. Okay. In school. It, it doesn't matter what color the, the student is. If you try to discipline them, yeah. then, I mean. Do you think it's often, though? Do you think it's often that white people have to think about being white? Well, it gets thrown in their face sometimes. I mean, if, if you discipline a student and they happen to be African American, they say, oh, you're being racial, you're being prejudiced. Mm -hmm. No, I'm, it's, the, it's the behavior. It's the behavior. Okay, the behavior let me ask you, the when the last time have you had to think about being white? Uh, when I came to Eastern. Okay. Because, I mean, I grew up in a rural town, you know, basically all white people. And I think we had two African American families in our town. Okay. And then when I came to Eastern, it's a lot of people come down from Chicago and from say up from St. Louis, and there's kind of like a culture shock. Yeah, but in general, I will probably probably point out that most whites probably don't always have to think about being white, right? Where sometimes minority, where, where sometimes being a minority is always have to think about skin color. Okay. Go ahead. But, and this is me personally, is I think about that when I'm not the majority. Mm -hmm. when exactly. I visit, whenever I visit my son in Washington, D.C., for example, and, and there was different, a lot of different cultures, not just African American, right? and you think, hey, you're not the predominant race that you see, and so then you start thinking about wearing red. Otherwise, you just take it for granted. It's, it's like you said, a privilege. And, you just, you don't, you and, and sometimes it. you don't see it, right? Sometimes you don't always see the ways in which you're privileged either, right? And so whereas, you know, being an African-American, I think about being black at all the time. I think about being black when I saw the Ferguson protests on TV. I've been on black when I traveled through certain cities in our great state. You know, so a lot of times, you know, when I go to educational conferences I'm, uh, at the IPA next week, I was at the superintendent conference last week, and a lot of times when I go to conferences, guess who's the only black person in the room? You guessed it, it's numero uno. So a lot of times I always have to think about, in some way or some degree, but until we begin recognizing ways of our privileges and ways of, uh, it will help us when we are dealing with, with students. Uh, because we ourselves, first of all, have to see ways in which we are, like I said, privileged. But I don't understand why people have to feel that way. I mean, I, I consider myself more like a chameleon. I mean, if I'm with a bunch of bikers, you know, I can fit in there and not, you know, uh -huh. not stand out. If I'm, if I'm the only white person in the room, I can fit in with that because, you know, I've got no problem with that. It just seems sometimes people try to make things more difficult because maybe of their upbringing or something like that. But, uh, just the way I was raised, a, a person's a person. You yeah. expect that person, it doesn't matter what color they are, what, you know, what nationality or anything. It's but, but we know it matters, though. Yeah. That's but we know it matters, right? I mean, I, how many of you all think Denzel is a good actor? He'd never be Superman. He'd never play Superman. In my opinion, Jamie Foxx would never be a Superman. Why not? Why not? Why? That's just my opinion. Why? Because they're, because they're black, but... Because they're black. Yeah, but... So it does matter, though. But if they turned it around and it did make him Superman... But if they turned around and did make him Superman... Then you'd have you'd have all the black people would go to see the movie, but there would be no white people. It's, the culture's like that all the time. Mm -hmm. You go to a movie theater, depending on what the movie's about, you're going to see the people that fit in that culture mostly there. 
Mm -hmm. but, but we know race matters. It should matter, right? Yeah. But race matters, and I'm just saying that we need to be able to see how race matters, because if not, we'd be fooling ourselves. Right, but that's, that's why I'm here. here. Yeah, exactly. I want to try to reach those kids to say that race shouldn't matter, but it, it, everybody recognizes it does, but why does it have to? In the, the world that we live in now, why does it have to? Why yeah. can't we just appreciate diversity? But isn't it faulty to say race doesn't matter or shouldn't matter? It is going to matter. It's always going to matter, but our job should be to educate people like she was saying back there, about their biases and about their experiences and about their culture so that they don't, mm -hmm. uh, they're not faulty in how they view other people. It's not about making everybody gray. It's That's right. And so how do we achieve, uh, hold that thought. You know, and, and I'm going to say, and I'm, as a, from the perspective of a parent of two African American children, one who's in grad school here, um, another who's in school in Parkland and at home. And, and I have honestly gotten to a point after almost 20 plus years of sitting on every committee I could sit on to talk about race and race matters, culture, um, teaching, training. I have actually gotten to that point of saying, you know what, you either have it or you don't have it. And I mean, you can teach it because you've probably been in 50 different, and I'm just exaggerating numbers, but workshop after workshop to talk about what exists, how it exists. And, but I want to go back to that point of when you say, why is it that when you discipline, every time you discipline, then they look at you and they say, oh, it's racial because you're doing, you know, and, and automatically what I thought about, because we are talking about our kids and we're talking about the schools, because you are probably the majority, and like you said, race may not, you, you don't think about, oh, I'm just a white man and how these black kids look at me. I'm thinking about even this workshop right now from a perspective and, and really looking at it side by side with the, the news two nights ago, talking about the state of Illinois, talking about the fact that the white students are no longer the majority in, in the schools, but, the caption, and I'm looking yeah. looking at several of your slides. The caption it showed just how, what the percent of Hispanic students showed the percent of white students, and then it had minorities. Yeah. So yeah. where 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 do we at that point start to back to your word mm -hmm. value? Mm -hmm. Look at whether you really take in consideration the values or not. Because when we talk about values. We can talk about going into the schools and the school system and the values in that building, but values are shaped before they get to that. that that's true. And in some cases, uh -huh. we are at a point where we have to teach our kids what, what they need to value to endure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and let me wrap this up because I know we type press for time and we got started late. But, but it, it, I agree with both of you all. It shouldn't matter. It shouldn't matter, but we know that it does matter. And the only way that we're going to get past this, and this is what I was saying earlier, the only way we're going to get past this is a couple of things. First, we have to appreciate what she was saying, everybody's diversity, everybody's uh, values. We got to appreciate, and it goes more beyond uh, saying that, hey, I celebrated Cinco de Mayo, so now we are, you know, we okay. And I think what you do, to go mm -hmm. back to because I feel like we're missing this valuable opportunity mm -hmm. to honor what you asked, is you bring a voice to that, that's, to that's what, what it is. And you to say, do. you know what? Yeah, it is. We should appreciate and celebrate way. diversity instead of... You know, oh, absolutely. That, that's my point, is why can't we get there when we've got, you know, teachers need to understand, but also kids need to be brought up yeah. understanding. We're, this is a world society now. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter... Yeah. What your background is, you're you're still in the same yeah. spaceship called Earth. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta yeah. exist. Yeah, and, and I agree, and that's what I'm all for celebrating diversity. And when we celebrate diversity, like I say, first of all, it requires a change in our mind states. The school culture has to change. We have to do things 360 days a year to honor everybody. But also, go, let me go back to something I said earlier. It also, it have to, the foundation that it's going to be built upon is we have to identify our common values as a school. 
And, uh, you know, we, it's okay to represent these different groups. We should. But also, what makes uh, Champagne what? What's your mascot at your school? Comet. Comet. What makes us the Comets? You know, we have to have some common values, too, because if we don't, we always going to be separate to a degree. Another quick point is that, yes, although that it should matter, we also have to make sure that we tell the students, look, up front, that we have to get past this, but I have to prepare students for the real life of work see, for, when they get out there. See, I I'm, teach my kids that you have to get past it. I want my children to understand what it is they're going to face <coughs> every day. Respect uh, those adults, regardless uh, of the race. Bring it to mom. Exactly. Because like you from Houston, my daughter got a culture shock when she came to Easter. Now, now real. Now, <laughs> Now, now, real quick, real quick, what, what one advocacy group decided to do was they decided to teach minority children how to handle when they're getting pulled over by the police. Now, you should argue, right, they shouldn't have to do that, right? They should not have to say how to act when you get pulled over by police, but they also understand that there have been by some instances. Token, we still do that, too. Exactly. In our and, and let me go back because I'm wrapping up here. Another quick thing too, what, let me go back to says it requires a change in our own mind state because if we don't first look to our inner self and see our own biases, then we won't be able to build that environment in the school. And let me show, let me show this one quick video and this will wrap it up about uh, why that's important. They call it fair share, that's what they want us to pay. Uh, Fish and chips are amazing. Mm. Really? And where? Must be a Korean thing. All right. Appreciate you all coming.